Hey, how's it going people? Michael here and thank you for tuning in to Use Gadgets. And in this episode, I'm going to try to help you determine whether or not buying an older Mac Pro is worth it in 2015. First off, this video is not a battle between Mac OS X or Linux or Windows. So let's not get into a war of words about which operating system is more superior. I have all three operating systems running somewhere around here and each one has a special place in my heart. Secondly, this video is meant for people considering purchasing their first Mac Pro or maybe they already received one as a present and it's an older Mac Pro and they are undecided whether or not to keep it or upgrade to a newer model. So let me introduce you to my 2006 Mac Pro, which I purchased back in 2012. Uh, when I bought it, uh, it was already six years old and it came pre-installed with uh, Mac OS X 10.5, codenamed uh, Leopard. And then um, it's now currently running uh, Mac OS X 10.7, codenamed Lion. This was Apple's last computer to move up into the Intel platform. Uh, and it was designed to uh, work with high definition audio and video. And these applications demand storage and memory that was not commonly found in desktop computers. The codecs used also required high levels of processing and multi-threading, which was why it had not one but two CPU sockets with multi-core CPUs. Even today, it's uncommon to find two CPU sockets in consumer motherboards. Now the question is, is it worth it to buy this Mac Pro in 2015? Well, that's an ambiguous question which requires a bit of quantifiable measurements. So first, let's define what it means to be worth it. As I mentioned earlier, the Mac Pro was designed for digital video and audio editing. Both Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro run great on it, which is perfect for creating personal videos or small-time video production. It's also powerful enough to handle processor intensive rendering of animations. And if you're into photography, when used with a good photo management tool, it's also a great machine for managing your photos. There's also excellent support for hardware and software for producing music and sound effects. So you will need to ask yourself, how much post-production work will you be doing on the Mac Pro? Is it worth getting if all you're doing is watching YouTube videos? Well, we all know that Macs cost double the amount of an equivalent Windows-based PC. And from the surface, you might be thinking why that is when underneath, it's just a clone PC, right? Well, no, not really. Consider this. This Mac was made in 2006. Any PC that I had back in 2006 are now long gone. Let me give you another example. This is a 2013 Windows 7 laptop that cost me $300 brand new and when it was new it took 3 minutes to get to the desktop. Today it takes 10 minutes and the hard drive would still be hammering. It takes 1 minute for Firefox to open and I have multiple pop-up windows because of malware infection. I'd not even dare render a video on this laptop. This is a 9 year old computer and it takes 45 seconds to get to the desktop. Obviously a newer computer at twice the cost will boot up in just 30 seconds. But is a 15 second improvement worth the upgrade to you? How about triple the cost for a 20 second improvement? But boot time contests follow the laws of diminishing returns. So let's extrapolate that to something like video production. Will you be exporting sequences that take 45 minutes to render? Will a 15 minute improvement be worth it? How about a 20 minute improvement? One of the advantages of the Mac Pro is that it has two CPU sockets. On this machine, I can boot into Windows 7 Professional, which takes advantage of two CPU sockets, each having four cores, giving me a total of eight. By the way, originally this had two dual core CPUs. I upgraded it to two quad core CPUs a few months after I bought it. The extra cores make it convenient for me to run virtual machines because I still need Windows to do my accounting. I can dedicate two cores to run Windows 7 in a virtual machine without logging out of OS X. It makes video rendering a lot faster because of this, but at a price. This is one of the downfalls of an older Mac Pro. The outdated Xeon processor in it consumes a lot of power and when all 8 cores are at 100%. 
it would be consuming electricity equivalent to running three 100 watt light bulbs. But in the winter it makes a great space heater because even at idle it would still consume 175 watts. My 2008 MacBook Pro on the other hand only uses 85 watts when both cores are at 100%. So you can guess which one I use if I'm just going to be surfing the web. I'm averaging $5 a month in my hydro bill when I use my Mac Pro 5 days a week. My newer Windows 7 computer which has an i7 quad core CPU only uses about $2 a month in electricity in casual use. By comparison my 8 core Linux server which is running 24 7 consumes about $10 a month. This is why whenever I'm not using my Mac Pro I put it to sleep or just power it down. Will the higher processing power be worth the cost of a higher electricity bill to you? The 2006 Mac Pro officially supported Mac OS X 10.7 codenamed Lion. Beyond that you'd need to do a lot of tinkering. I didn't bother yet but if you want the latest Mac OS X there is a way to do it. The only software that I know of that no longer supports Lion is the Box Sync tool which is unfortunate because I use it a lot to transfer my recorded audio from my Blackberry Z10. Yes the sync still works but it's just a matter of time until they update the tool and then break it. As for software support, you can still run the latest versions of Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro. I don't use Microsoft Office for Mac anymore. I use Google Apps for that, but if you're still into that, it fully supports Microsoft Office for Mac. I have the 2003 version. I'm not sure if it'll support the later versions. I suspect that this machine will continue to be supported by most of the software that I use for another five years. But beyond that, I'll be stuck with using older software. While it doesn't mean I'll be less productive, it also means I can no longer be more productive. Is it worth the risk of getting stuck with older software five years from now? Well, there's no contest. The Mac Pro is by far the quietest computer I have around the house. I remember the first time I had it running under my desk and I couldn't tell on which side it was on because it was so quiet. The next one up in terms of sound level is my MacBook Pro, then my Windows 7 gaming PC, and by far the loudest is my Linux server in the basement, which can still be heard even from the second floor. So it makes for a better audio recording when I have to shoot next to the Mac Pro, which was what I did in this video. Is the silence worth it to you? If you're a Mac user, you probably already know that one of the greatest benefits of owning a Mac is that it just works. And I mean everything including the data backup, USB, Firewire and Bluetooth devices. This is the Mac Pro's greatest strength in that I have not found myself tinkering with hardware or software because of a crash, a virus or malware. Not only because Mac OS X is so stable, but because the hardware components were made to last. Even the case is so thick and heavy that it feels like a tank. Seriously, when I did a system restore on this thing, when I upgraded my hard drives it even restored the windows I had opened. But if you still feel the need to upgrade any of the components, an older Mac Pro can still accommodate many upgrades. Like I said earlier since I bought this Mac Pro, I have already upgraded the CPU and RAM. I have also installed three drives configured in a Stripe RAID array giving me faster response time and more storage. If ever I'm going to spend more money on this thing, I would invest in an SSD drive. Having said all that, you will be limited by the maximum bandwidth that the motherboard supports. For example, the highest CPU it will support is the quad-core Xeon X5355, which has a 1.3 GHz frontside bus. These can be had for as low as $50 on eBay today. These processors, while cheap, are nothing to sneeze at. Just look at this decent Geekbench score. Also, the RAM frequency will be limited to 667MHz DDR2. And while you can install the latest SSD drive, the interface will only support a maximum link speed of 3 gigabits per second. Will the limited upgradability be worth it? And finally, we come down to the purchase price. These prices for a 2006 Mac Pro are accurate as of July 2015. Now these are prices for the newest Mac Pros and these are the prices for the newest Windows PCs. 
you will need to accept that Macs cost considerably more than a Windows PC of equivalent specs, and that is because it uses server-grade components. But the 2006 Mac Pro now costs less than a 2012 Windows desktop PC. Considering all of the previous points that I've made in terms of intended use, processor speed, power consumption, software support, noise level, dependability, and upgradability, is it worth it to you? Well, it has been three years since I bought this thing and I'm still using it today. In fact, this video was edited using this machine and is the only machine I use to edit and render my videos. My first YouTube video was a walkthrough of my 2006 Mac Pro back in 2012. And if you'd like to see it, go ahead and click over here. But back to our original question, is it worth buying an old Mac Pro? Let's quantify it by using the return on investment. I paid $1,200 for this including the upgrades over the past three years with a power consumption of about $5 a month. That is equivalent to $460 a year or $38 a month. The total cost of downtime during the three years due to a crash was $0. Yes, it never crashed on me. Buying this Mac Pro made an immediate impact on my productivity. Over the three years that I've owned it, it helped me deliver videos, music, sound effects, animations, websites, and mobile apps to my customers with a value far exceeding the initial cost within the first three months that I owned it. Was it worth it for me? Damn right it was. And it still is. Would I still buy another old Mac Pro today? Absolutely. Should you get a 2006, 2007, 2008, or a 2009 Mac Pro? Again, it will follow the laws of diminishing results, especially if you're only going to be using it for web surfing. Let me put it another way. If you had a budget of $2,000 and four employees, would you buy one dependable 12-core 2009 Mac Pro to share among them, or four equally dependable 2006 Mac Pros? And on that note, I will end this episode. Hey guys, let me know what you think of this video in the comments section. And if you like this video, please hit share or hit that like button. Or better yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.